Right, so first thing we're going to look at is I want you to good morning consider the sequence. sequence and it's given to us by a formula. First thing I'm going to ask you is write down first three four terms. Do that first, and then part B. What do you think about what happens? Do the nth term. Which of course that is the nth term is just U N. Like it's really large, what I'm talking about is as it ends to infinity. Alright, so Marco, how do you get the first four terms? Yep. Alright. So we're subbing n, subbing 1 in for n, that gives us our first term, so 3 times 2 to the 1, which is, yep, good, second term, we just sub in 2, that's 3 times 2 squared, which is, yep, good, u3 is 3 times 2 cubed, which is, that's not 24, and then u4, 3 times 2 to the 4, which is 48. Good. So our sequence is 6, 12, 24, 48. Okay. We can see that this is a what type of sequence? Geometric. Because it is going up by a common ratio of 2. Right. Okay, good. R is equal to 2 in this case. And we can also see, okay, we've got a 2 up here, that represents our common ratio. Um, <clears throat> so what happens to our nth term as n gets really large? What happens as, you know, we start increasing this u5, u10, u a million, u10 billion? What is, what's going to happen to the nth term? Yeah, it gets bigger, right. We can say as n tends to infinity, what can we say that u n tends to? Infinity. infinity as well, okay? As one gets really big, the other gets really big. We can see this. I'll come back to this screen in a second. If I put this in as a graph, I've got three times, so I've got u n equals three multiplied by two to the power of n. Okay, so there is um, the graph of this. So can we can see as n gets really large, okay, our graph is increasing and increasing and increasing and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yep. Yeah? So we're only actually interested in the positive values. Okay, as one gets as n gets large, our graph is increasing. Is that okay, Lily? Yeah. 
Okay, so what happens then if I change this? Let's uh, slightly alter it and say, uh, we'll consider. Sequence un equals let's say three multiplied by zero point two to the n. Okay, same type of thing. Write down first four terms. And then B, is that okay if I put it down to there? What happens? happens to UN as N gets really large, okay? Do that for me and have a think about it. All right, so we've got our first four terms. So it's similar to last time. Let's change color. Okay, so we're going to have U1, which is going to be three times 0 0.2 to the power of 1. What does that give us? 0 0.6. U2? 0 0.2. So the 3 point, sorry, 3 times 0 0.2 squared. Ari? 0 0.12. 0.12. U3? 3. 3 times 0 0.2 cubed. 0 0.24. Okay, and so we get the idea, I'll write out the sequence, 0 0.6, 0 0.12, 0 0.024, 0 0.0048, and so on. So what's happening to UN in this case as N gets really large? getting smaller, but the more specific, Samara, yes. what is it getting closer and closer to? Zero. Yeah, it's getting closer and closer to zero. Okay. And again, we can see this, if I go back to uh, our graph, if I put in, instead of having two. Okay, we can see that as n gets larger and larger and larger, our graph is getting closer for you and it's getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Okay. Any questions so far? No? Right, so if we have a sequence like this one, okay, what's the common ratio here? Yep, 0 0.2, and we can see that as, as the sequence increases, okay, these numbers are getting closer and closer and closer to 0, okay? So because they're getting really, really, really small, what I can do is, because um, this sequence is converging to a point, we can add up a sequence like this, okay? Because these numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Oops. Okay, so we're going to write down. And only sum of an infinite no geometric 
sequence, sequence. If our value of R, what do you think that our value of R has to be if I want to find the sum of the geometric sequence? You know, if I want these values to be getting closer and closer to zero. It has to be what, sorry? That has to be less than one, good. It also has to be, all right. Greater than zero. Well, it can be greater than negative one, okay? <clears throat> That's a really, really important point, okay? So you, this is something that you must remember, okay? Okay, because what happens then, Bailey, is if R is less than one, if it's like a decimal value, say so 0.3 or 0.5 or negative 0.5, as the sequence increases, okay, these values are going to get closer and closer to zero, which means we can add them all up. Okay? Otherwise, it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. So, title then, the formula. Finding. sum of an infinite geometric sequence. Okay, so if R is Bigger than negative one and less than um, one, then what is the first term in uh, a geometric sequence? U one. Okay, so the first term is U one. What is the second term? U2, or what's the second term? What was it? U1R, right, good. What is the next term? U1R squared. Next term? U1R cubed. And so on. Okay, so what we're going to do is what we're doing, we've got our geometric sequence and we're adding up all of these terms, yes? Now, and this is just the sum to infinity, okay? It's the sum of all of the terms, okay? It goes on forever and adding all of them up, unlike the sum of the first n terms, okay? The sum of the first n terms is a finite sequence, okay? This is all of these terms that go on forever. So the way we're going to do this is, we kind of talked about this a little bit last time, I'm going to multiply every single term by R. So what does this become? U1, R. What does this term become? U1, R squared. This term becomes? U1, R cubed. This term becomes? Right, and then it was the next one would be u one r to the five, and so on. So remember, our aim here is to find a formula for the sum of the infinite terms. Okay. So what am I going to do next? Do you think I'm going to subtract them? I've actually just written it down. So I've got the sum to infinity. Minus 
minus r times. So what happens when I do this line? Subtract away this line. What happens when I do this top line? Subtract the bottom. Only u1 is left, okay. What will happen is because I'm doing that, it's going to cancel with that. Because I'm doing the top line, this, subtract all this. This is going to subtract off this. This is going to subtract off this. U1 r to the 4 is going to subtract off this and it's going to continue forever. Yes? So we're just left with u1. Right, our next step is, Jen, if in doubt, factorize. Okay, I want to remember, I'm trying to get a formula for the sum to infinity. So I can factorize out 1 minus r. And then to finish it off, sum to infinity is equal to e1 over 1 minus r. I've just factorized s sum to infinity out. Okay, so this times this. This means sum to infinity. Sum to infinity times r gives me r times it, okay? So just run that times that. And that times that. Now this formula is really important. Okay, you're given it in the formula booklets. And the, there it is there, okay, and it's telling you that the absolute value of r has to be less than 1, okay, so that means it has to be less than 1 or greater than negative 1, okay, so that is the formula, okay. So you don't need to remember it, but it's dead easy, and it's dead easy to use. And it only works, remember, when r is less than 1, bigger than <laughs> negative 1. What is R? R is the ratio. Yep, the common ratio. Okay, any questions? So you want to see uh, how this actually works? It's really dead straightforward to actually use this. Sorry, Mark, could you still need that? Okay, so let's do this question. It'll take you literally 30 seconds. Find the sum. Of this geometric. find the sum of all of these terms, okay? It goes on forever. See if you can do it, okay? First step is to find what value? All right. So I'm going to write that down. Find R. Right, okay, because remember, to find R, R is whatever you do to this to get this, okay? So what do I multiply? And by to get it, okay? Wait, or I could think of it. It has to be multiplication, oh. yeah. Okay, and it has to be the same thing that I do to it to get 6.4. So if we think about it in terms of the inverse or working backwards, it has to be 
it over n, which is the same as? 4 over 5. 4 over 5. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. Okay, so r is greater than negative 1, but less than 1. So we can sum up this sequence, okay? What did anybody write down next? Talk to me. We find r. Okay, what's next? Right, so I do use my formula, but you do not need to remember it. So the sum of this sequence is u1, which is 10, divided by 1 minus 4 fifths. I am going to just leave this as fractions. What is 1 take away 4 fifths? 1 fifth. Right, okay. How do I do 10 divided by a fifth? Uh, two two okay, so instead of having one fifth, it's going to be five over one. So the sum of this infinite number of terms is 50. Okay, if I add up 10 plus 8 plus 6.4 plus 5.12 and keep going on forever and ever and ever and ever, it will give me the value of 50. Okay, now if you actually put this into your calculator, 10 plus 8 plus 6.4 plus 5.12, and you keep going, you will get, you know, up to 49.99999 and so on, and it will keep getting closer and closer and closer to 50, but if you were to actually do it in the calculator, you won't actually ever get there, okay? Isn't like this infinite Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, like theoretically, you can work out what the sum of the sequence is, but practically, you know, if you were to sit and do it with the calculator, you would never reach it, okay? you would never get there. Make sense? Okay. Any questions? I mean, you could make it with the calculator like always. Yeah, you, yeah, possibly. Um, now, you have done this type of stuff before. Um, let's. Uh, this is a really kind of common question that you will probably see. Right. Let's say uh, zero point. Zero point two recurring as a fraction. Okay, so this is a really kind of common question, Ari. Right. Okay, so we got zero point two recurring. What is zero point two recurring? Just zero point. Right. These two go on forever. Forever, right, okay. So if I was to write this out in terms of a sequence, it's going to be 0 0.2. That's a plus sign. No, it's not a plus sign, it is a dot. Well, that's what we're going to show how, did, how we do it now. Very good. So 0 0.2 plus, what do we have to add on to this to get this? 0 0.0. No. 0 0.0. Right. Okay, we'll do it step by step. 0. Point 0. 0. 0. 0.0. 0.2. Oh, and then 0. Plus. 0. 0. 0. 0 point and this goes on for how long okay it goes on an infinite number of times right now what type of sequence have we got here arithmetic why is it geometric okay and what am i multiplying by each time zero no zero point one, yeah. 0 0.1, right. I'm multiplying each time by 0 0.1. So if I can, oh, that is so annoying. If I can 
out of all of this sequence, okay, going on forever and ever and ever, I will be able to figure out what 0 0.2 recurring is as a, a fraction, okay? Now, we know that r here is greater than negative 1 and less than 1, okay? So I can find the sum of all these terms, yep? I can just use my formula. I'm going to write it down again. Now remember you're given the formula, you do not need to remember it. What is u1? 0 0.2. I'm doing 1, subtract what's r. Okay, good. What is 1 take away 0 0.1? And what is 0 0.2 over 0 0.9 the same as? No, as a fraction. Um, what is what? 0 0.2 over 0 0.9? Oh, no, 0 0.2 is not what? 0 0.2 is. Yeah, but 0 0.2 over 0 0.9 as a fraction. 2 over 9? 2 over 9, right, good. Okay, so what we said here is, okay, the sum of all these terms is equal to 2 over 9, yep. The sum of all these terms is the same as this, yep, it's just a different way that we wrote it out. So, 0 0.2 recurring is the same as 2 ninths. Okay, isn't that quite nice? Okay, that's quite nice. Okay, here's one for you. Do uh, 0 0.9 recurring. Zero point nine recurring. All right. Oh, wait. Shh, shh, shh. Okay. Let's have a look first. No, wait. Let's look. No. Listening. We didn't get what you. Listening. I know. Listening. Okay. So the first term is zero point nine. Next term is zero point zero nine, and so on. Is this an arithmetic sequence? Sorry, geometric sequence? Yeah. Yep. What is the common ratio? Yeah. 0 0.1. Yeah. 0 0.1, okay. And 0 0.1 is, meets the condition that it is less than 1, greater than negative 1. So I can sum up all of these terms. The sum to infinity is first term over. 1 take away r, which is 0 0.1. 0 0.9 over 0 0.9. What's 0 0.9 over 0 0.9? 9, 9 over 9, which is 1. So what we're saying here is this sequence, 0 0.9 recurring, which is 0 0.99999, etc., is equal to, actually equal to 1. It's one of those really kind of confusing things that, yeah, yeah, but they are actually the same because this goes on forever. It's the fact that we think at some point this will stop, okay? But it's having to get your head around. This does not stop. This goes on forever and ever and ever. So it does actually equal one. It's kind so of this... the numbers all the same? Then? The number... No, so and it, so it's to do with that idea of limits, okay, and of approaching 
something, okay? So it's kind of like that frog, remember that was crossing the road, it jumps halfway each time. So it's, is it ever going to get to the other side? Yes. Practically. No. Practically, practically yeah, yeah, well, but, but theoretically, theory, theoretically, no. But in theory, do like whole numbers exist? Yes. So we're only, we're looking here at, you know, what is happening as this, you know, because this goes on forever, okay, that's the kind of thing, it's an infinite amount here that this goes on by, 0 0.999 forever, which I suppose a better way of saying it, rather than equals one, would be that it approaches one, which may be a bit better to say that, but it is one, okay? Let me just actually record that and put down, we're, you can practice this stuff, on page 161, okay, and uh, practice seven, uh, can you do the first four questions please, can I get those done for tomorrow, or Tuesday, yeah, okay, all good?